Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about acoustic diffuser before and after. Let's talk about a diffuser. What is a diffuser? There's a lot of products in the marketplace today call themselves diffuser. I, I even saw some foam the other day that's representing itself as a diffuser. You have to be very, very careful here. Company take, companies take advantage of the ignorance of the population when it comes to acoustics. And you have to know the underlying science underneath everything so you don't get trapped into this nonsense. A diffuser is a technology to make a small room sound larger. Now, how does it do that? It, we localize distance with our hearing and our brains through reflections off surfaces. So what a diffuser does is it takes these big reflection and it breaks it down into a lot of series of smaller reflections, which makes it difficult for us to localize distance. Now, what does that do to the overall sonic presentation of the room? It makes the room sound larger. It also adds resolution to the presentation too. There's more separation between instruments and vocals. There's more air, there's more space. So this is the psychoacoustic benefit of a tool that's properly used. So it's designed to localize the impact of reflections and that fools our brain into thinking it's louder. A good example, or bigger, I'm sorry. A good example of this is our studio in Hollywood. We have nine foot ceilings and as an experiment, I would blindfold people and bring them into the studio. Play a few songs for them and I'd say, how? far away is the ceiling. They're sitting in the chair. 12 feet, 13 feet, 14 feet were the guesses. Well, it was nine. So that gives you an idea of the power of diffusion because we had it on the ceiling in that studio. So it's a way to kind of fool the brain, um, not trick it, but fool it into thinking the room is larger and therefore, you know, sounding larger, which don't we all want more? of what we're trying to create. I know I do. Um, there's always that next level that you want to go, get to and, and treat. So Ki quadratic diffusion is really the only true diffuser. There's five very rigid criteria on diffusion and, and I've done a video, a couple videos on those criteria. If we're going to use a tool that we're going to call a diffuser, it has to act like a diffuser. It has to Make sure that the room is completely diffused, that the sound fields are completely diffused even throughout the room. I'm a stickler for managing pressure in rooms, having the pressure. If you think of a room, here's how I think of rooms. I think of rooms as little rooms inside of little rooms. And I want the pressure in each one of those little rooms to be as close as we can to each other through the whole energy transformation or the energy output into the room. That's what we want. So we have quadratic really is the only true diffusion because it actually has a measured frequency response. And we need that. We need that ability to measure frequency response. So we have one dimensional and two dimensional diffusion. Let's go over here. And you've all seen the one dimensional diffusers. They look like this. And then two dimensional diffusion is a combination of vertical and horizontal diffusion. So a vertical diffuser diffuses sound out in a horizontal array like that, okay? A horizontal diffuser diffuses energy in a vertical array. So if you put the two together, you get horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, alternating through the sur through surface area. And you really get a surface area that it's going to be really hard to localize distance. Two-dimensional diffusion is a good process to use when your distances are small. You're sitting in the listening chair, the mixing chair, whatever you, chair you're in. If you've got three, four, five, six foot distances to work with, two-dimensional is almost a must. One-dimensional, if you want to spread sound out, make it sound wider, get a wider sound stage. We use two-dimensional a lot with two channels or one dimension a lot with two channel sound. We put one dimension on the front wall, one dimensional diffusion on the rear wall. It opens up the sound stage, makes it wider. 
adds resolution, okay? So, got to be careful though, because diffusion acts like a magnifying glass. If you don't have your reverb times balanced, your modal pressures balanced within the room, the diffuser will highlight those untreated tasks, if you will. So you want to make sure that you've satisfied all the criteria inside your room before you add diffusion. I get three or four calls every day from people. Well, I want to do this with diffusion. I want to do that with diffusion. And my first question is, why? Because I got to know the reason why you're thinking like this. Because most of the time, the thinking is wrong. So if you can correct the thinking, you can over time change the belief system. And that's what we've been trying to do for many years now. Sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't. But the bottom line here is you have to pick a tool that will achieve an objective. And I get all kinds of reasons for choosing diffusion. But the most popular one is it looks cool. Well. Okay, it does. It looks kind of neat, but it's a tool. It's a acoustic tool that you have to use correctly, or it'll make your room sound worse. Here's another thing it'll do. It'll drain your bank account because they're expensive. Most of our diffusers have 90 parts, and all those parts have to be cut. All those parts have to be assembled. All those parts have to be finished. The labor and man hours in a diffuser it's unbelievable. So you, you got to be very, very careful here. You don't want to just haphazardly put things here and put things there and keep your fingers crossed that it's going to work. Hope is not a strategy in acoustics. All right. So two channel, we can use the one dimensional front wall, rear wall, two dimension on the rear wall if the distances are a lot smaller. Home theater, we like diffusion on the ceiling and the rear wall. A lot, some people put it on the front wall too, that's fine. There's not a lot of space up there on the front of a theater. You got the screen, you got the speakers, equipment, things like that most of the time. So we have to be really careful there. Mix room, rear wall, ceiling sometimes. Mix engineers don't want that slap back from the rear wall and they don't want it in their mix. So two dimensional ceiling will, will help you with that. So acoustic. Diffuser before and after. Think about your strategy. Think about your objectives. And then treat each surface area to work towards achieving that objective. Have a strategy. So you're not wasting money. And most important, you're not wasting time. You'll get to the result that you want faster and you won't waste money. So I really hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.